Aha! Ah, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought I thought I thought maybe I thought maybe you were going a tour around the world quickly. I I, I wasn't quite well, sure. I thought I'd been raptured, so <laughs> <laughs> um, and let me just check this is streaming okay. Yes, I'm back. So um <laughs> Let me just check, guys. If you're coming on, if you can just share, if you can like, if you can comment, it would do us the world of our favors. It helps us get out past the algorithm. If tonight you have questions of any sort, um, do me a favor, hit question, write question first so it pops up easier. As you can see, I'm on with my good friend John Ward, Apostle John Ward. And tonight we're just going to talk, we're going to chat about the state of the world about different things happening in the world and where we are prophetically. Mm. Um, so without further ado, did you see the news that it looks like uh, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu will be back um, as PM in Israel? Yes. Now, I, I don't know what your thoughts on that. My thoughts are that that's a, a kind of a positive for the Christian conservative and for the, those of conservative values. I agree. Um, it's the same as when you look at what's happening in Brazil through the Brazilian, you, the Brazilian uh, election, which is up in turmoil at the moment, uh, mm -hmm. although, although they say uh, Bolsonaro has decided to, is, is kind of like going to relent. He's not personally said so, yeah, but that, other yeah. report, there's other reports that says that he's had, um, he's had, uh, um, concerns about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but then if you think of it, yeah, you've got another man who was in prison, who was a previous prime minister of, of it. And, and obviously you've got the president of this country uh, that I'm presently in congratulating him already when there's still a yeah. couple of things that need to be done. So um, yeah, I believe we are on a tipping point um, in like we've never been before. Yeah. Um, and yet we, we've always got to remember that the scripture does not lie. And that no matter our opinions or our, our interpretation about something, we go back to scripture and we see where mm -hmm. the scripture puts us in the world today. Um, we can see all the well, stuff taken on. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we would be uh, like tonight is normally Bible study and we would be in the second part of Genesis 28, normally tonight. And one of the things that happens there is Jacob um, travels and he travels from Beersheba to Haran. And I like that because there's a message in that. Now, obviously, then that's the that's where he gets the vision or the dream in which he sees the ladder to sit. Uh, that's the correct. To stand in it and that's stand right. for, to, uh, to heaven. And when you see that, there's so much unpacked in that because when you take the name Beersheba, it means the well of seven oaks. It's the well of oaks. That, that's when correct. Born, when that's we get born again, we have a note, a covenant with God. But then he's traveling to Haran. And Haran is, when you take the etymology of the word, it is the source of central heat. And I think now, as we're seeing geopolitical shifting, as we're seeing a, a global uh, food crisis, as we're seeing wars and rumors of wars, as we're seeing people present themselves as the Messiah in certain countries, you know, as we're seeing all of this unfold, there is a call upon the church right now to move from just saying, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, to being a believer set on fire for well, him no. and for well, the condition. Gary, I think... Uh, it, that's just confirmation. Uh, I was speaking to a, 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 my actual blood brother in, in Namibia the other day. And <clears throat> one thing that we, we were of, that, that we spoke about was for believers today, it's a very pivotal moment. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because the time is closing in when, one, when the decision you've made, either to follow him or not to follow him, it will be irrevocable. Exactly. Because we look in scripture, scripture tells us there's a time frame for that. Okay. You and I don't know that time frame. No man knows, but God knows that time frame. And everything is pointing to this place where God has taken out, he has taken out all doubt. Yeah. Now, 
Whatever decision you're making, this is not an ignorant decision. It's a decision that you've taken without a free will, out of free choice, and you've made it purposefully. Too yeah. often we want to give people excuses and, oh, you know, God says this. God. No, no, hold on. What does the scripture say? How long will you continue to mock God? How long? Because we've seen the mockery and the scoffing, uh, scoffing against God. Yeah. So-called well-known names. Here in America, for instance, we've had two of the well-known pastors linking up with the Democratic side mm -hmm. and having certain people. And these are I, I well know exactly the pastors you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they're linking up with them and, and approving these people. Yes. Okay. The, it, the scripture people is people who clear. Are, are pro killing babies. People are of pro course they are pro yeah, killing yeah. babies. They pro uh, they anti this, they anti that, anti the Bible by as yeah. such. Okay. Yeah. But again, I'm coming back to the point I'm make. I'm trying to make is this: that we are in a pivotal moment where you make your decision. And you will, either, you will become entrenched in either one. If you make your decision to follow Christ Jesus, you're going to become entrenched in following Christ Jesus. And yeah. if you make your decision to, not, to be away from him, you're going to become entrenched in that position. And you're not going to be able to change. Not mm -hmm. because God is not a God of love. Not because God is not able to whatever. Oh. The fact remains is we're living in this time that the scripture has already foretold that there comes a time when there is no more time for man to play the double-mindedness. Yeah. I think it's, it, it reminds me of what kind of student you were. You know, a student who was maybe uh, studious and, and spent time learning, and then you had the crammers, the ones who wanted to get in the last minute, and then yeah. you had the ones who were just sitting, laying back, and going, yeah, I don't know. I've got time. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll just, yeah. But I, the thing there's, sorry, the, there's, there's definitely time markers happening. And, you know, we talk and we have talked over the, the, the past couple of years about convergence of prophecy and different mm -hmm. things unfolding and the, the call upon the church in this time. I was speaking last night about our new prime minister, Rishi Sunak. And I told on him already I told on what his name means. It may, it, mm -hmm. it yes, means I, poured, I, saw, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Poured out on the altar and, you know, which altar are you being poured out upon? But there's also, a, you know, if you actually go into his background and you find out about who he is and what he's about, he had a hedge fund, com a hedge fund company. Fund company. Yeah. He started called Thelema Partners. Now, if, if you know what Thelema is, now Thelema, now you could say that he just came up with the name, but he'd done an interview with the Financial Times. And when he'd done this interview with the Financial Times, he quoted the book, and the book was the five books of the lives of the heroic deeds and sayings of Gargantia and his son Pantagruel, right? It's a fanciful book. But in the book, in the inscription of the book, it has one rule that, now remember, he named his half a billion dollar company. Hedge fund, yes. Yeah. Do what thou wilt. Mm, mm. The same law that it was in the satanic teachings That's of correct. Alistair That's Crowley. That's the same correct. Alistair Crowley, whose religion is called Thelema. And you kind of think to yourself, oh my goodness, you're starting to see all of the players come into place, all of the stuff being set, and it's time for the church to really wake up. There's yeah. no more sitting on the sidelines now. You see, Gary. There are two blindnesses in the world. Okay. Wow. There's the blindness that, that the scripture speaks us to pray against that the people that who are blinded by the God of this age. Okay. Yeah. Those are the people that have been walking in blindness for all these years. Yeah. They're walking in blindness. So we got to pray for their blindness, the eyes of enlightenment to go open so they can see the Lord and turn to him. Because I believe we are now on the cusp of seeing the greatest demonic harvest coming in. Yes. Okay. What I mean by a demonic harvest, 
those who have been perpetually in darkness all their lives, they've never been illuminated by the light of the truth, of, 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 the, of the light of the word. And when they get enlightened by that truth, they will run away from the darkness and they will never return. And it's on them that God will build their church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Yeah. Okay. Then there's the second blindness, which, which has erroneously for too long been ascribed to the, the God of this age. And that yeah. is the blindness that God brings upon his people of disobedience. Uh -huh. Okay. And when God brings his blindness upon people, it's because they have been, this is not just a moment that they've been walking like this. This is a pattern of their whole life's existence. They've yeah. been walking in disobedience and in willful disobedience against God. Okay. So who does that entail? That entails church after church, ministry after ministry, ministers of the gospel uh -huh. and, and the like that there's a blindness that's coming where their ears will no longer hear, their eyes yeah. will no longer see. Yeah. And you can do whatever you want to. They will never return to the truth. Okay. It's kind of like the Pharisees, you know, the, yes. in Acts 7, uh, I think it's verse 51, Stephen calls them uncircumcised of heart and ear. In other words, their ear and their heart are not in covenant with God. And 100%. It's I'm crazy, not... the deafness. Yeah. How many of them have actually been operating like Simon the Sorcerer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who thought they can buy the gift of God, buy the gift yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. And we've got that. We definitely got that taking place here today. Mm -hmm. And we can look at it as we are also seeing great falling away from many people. And in the midst of that great falling away, that's when the great demonic harvest is going to come in as well. Well, I, I looked at this before and I, I taught on the movement, the running race that happens between Elijah and Ahab. And they race to Jezreel and Jezreel is the place of the harvest. That's, what that's right. That's right. And it's kind of like you're, you're you know, if the church are being caught at the starter marks and we're not getting going. Because the church is going, well, I don't really want to, I don't want to talk about biblical prophecy. I don't want to talk about the things that are going on in the world because all I want to do, and this, I think this is the nature of quite a lot of people. And honestly, from my heart, I think it is maybe done sincerely, but very, I guess, very misled in their approach to try and just give a happy-go-lucky message that puffs someone up because they're they're worried about people's you know psychological well-being but i'm not worried about that per se as opposed to their eternal destination as opposed That's, to their, their their ability to walk kingdom-minded but here's the thing i understand what you're saying but when it comes to where does God ever tell us we need to worry about their psychological well-being? No, I, I, I don't. I'm just saying that I think. No, these, no but what, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm giving them grace to say. I, that. <laughs> you give them grace, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to give them grace because I'm not finding that in scripture. At mm. the end of the day, I'm not finding that in scripture. Yeah. The, the point we've made is, and I think, let's go look at the entrance point for this. Because it's always easy to look at symptomatic and symptoms and the symptomatic stuff, but we never get to what is the entry point. I believe the entry point is this. When we portray God as a God of love, okay, yeah. why is that important? Firstly, he's not a God of love because if he was a God of love, that means there's other things pertaining to it that, he, that he's also entrenched with. Yeah, yeah, I get you. But when we speak that he's a God who loves, uh -huh. it makes a very, just that change is a very, very significant change from yeah. a God of love and a God who loves. Yeah. A God of love means he has to have other things that is attached to it to be able to bring about that love. Mm -hmm. When he's a God who loves, then we can come to the true nature of who he is. He's a holy, just, righteous God, fully encompassing grace and mercy, ensuring in love because he is the personification of love. Yeah. It and it's, it's, everything. Okay. It's also identifying what that love is, because yeah. I think that one of the things that sort of irritates me to my core is that love being lumped in with the idea that 
Well, do you know what? Love holds no judgment. And this is the... the oh, no, 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 no. Love holds no very, It's but, completely contrary to scripture because if you take Revelation 3.19, Jesus says himself, as many as I love, I will rebuke, I will chase him. In other words, he will slap you about exactly get you back on the road. And it's done out of love. And yeah. it's, not, it's yeah. not done, you know, sometimes we, we sh you know, I know Christians will go, why me, why me, when they're they're going through something. But the point of it is, is that he's training us in that process. This is James 1 verse 2, counted all for joy when we fall That's into right. the trial. That's correct. Yeah, um, but you see, the reason I'm bringing up this issue, because this is an issue that's pervasive in the body of Christ today, which, yeah. is caused, which has caused a lot of division, which has caused a lot of erroneous teaching to come about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the reason we've got to do this is because if you don't know who you are attached to or who you are busy with, mm -hmm. then guess what? The enemy is able to come in. And yeah. just come, and he never comes in with a big smack. He comes in and he just comes on the side and he just comes alongside and slightly takes you a little bit offline. Yeah. Okay. And that's all that is need, needed for doubt because the, he operates in the shadow of doubt. Mm -hmm. So when we understand who God truly is, then we'll understand that because of him being just, he has to judge us. But he judges us not from the place of, 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 of um, uh, punishment. He judges us from the place of redemption. God's will, he reveals to redeem. He doesn't reveal to punish. But in the same measurement, when, when God has been warning and warning and warning all this time, and you don't take heed of that warning, what is what is the final result after that? It's judgment. Yeah. Whether we like it or not. That, that still does not take anything away that he's a good God. That does not take anything away that he's a God who loves. Yeah. And he loves beyond measure. If he didn't love, if he was a God of love, that would mean there would come a time when he would almost become tyrannical. Mm -hmm. Because... A tyrant, you look at it throughout history, when Lenin and all these guys started, when they started, everybody thought these were these guys were the best since sliced bread. And yeah. they were all had these great ideas. And, and all of a sudden, they just changed like this. Why? Yeah. Because if we portray God as a God of a God uh, of love, that means God is going to have another nature that we not yet seen. And he could switch like this. But a God who loves is a constant God who brings about everything that he says will come to pass. And he lingers long with us in opposed to cutting short that lingering. And that well, lingering is his grace. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's, it's seen as sovereignty in that way. Like back to that Genesis 28 scripture, whenever Jacob lays his head on the rock, exactly. and the, the ladder is going up and down and the angels are descending and ascending. It's God who's at the top of the ladder and he oversees all of these things that are unfolding, all of these, even though the, when we, we talk about the wickedness of nations and Psalm 2 that, you know, they plot in vain and God laughs at their duration. We're looking at things happening right now that are kind of more, I guess, shocking to your spirit, but not surprising because we know scripture will say this will happen, but kind of. Mm. You know, one of the key ones for me is what is happening with COP27. And yeah. COP27 is having, yeah. uh, is, is co-joining with the interfaith movement. So, you know, you've all Chris Slam and all of that nonsense. All that stuff. Well, on, I, I don't know if you've heard me talk about this, but on the 13th of November of uh, this year of COP27, these interfaith leaders are meeting at Mount Sinai to petition through prayer and to commit to establishing 10 climate comp commandments exactly 10 climate let's look at the book of revelation about the 10 what yeah. is it we, we do 10 but here's the thing look what they've already done in dubai yeah look, 
which has been already been established. Look at already the charter that was signed by all those signatories. Well, it, yet, well this this is it, it, sorry. It's going it's going more and more. You know, you've got you've got all of this happening. The, the Abu Dhabi stuff, the 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 uh, Abrahamic family houses weren't were initially proposed for Dubai, but then and and that's where they're built. But there were plans in place at the point of building right. to build these around yeah. the world, but including yes. ancient Babylon, Iraq. And, exactly. You know, it's it's straight out of the Bible, and this is where the frustration gets in. Stop giving a, a an Ambi Bambi sort of like exactly. early, very message. Start teaching the truth. The truth, exactly. Yeah. Because let's talk about you. You mentioned something now. Let's talk about the Abrahamic Accord. Yeah. Okay. For the first time, the this present Prime Minister of Israel is the first Prime Minister who stood up and said he would have no problem with a two-state solution. Yeah, I repeat. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Why is that important? Because what did God say? God said, you divide none of my land of my people. Yeah. And this is the first time that a, a Israeli prime minister stands up and says, we would have no problem in having a, having a talk about this. What is the Abrahamic Accord being that the West has tried to push all this time? And it even, even with Donald Trump and all of them, okay, was to create the very thing that God said, do not. Yeah. Okay, because Fine. it's setting up, it's setting up for that what the scripture is already saying when all nations at that, that stage will end up coming together and being against Israel. But let's go back. Satan has been trying for the last five years to bring all this to pass before its time frame. Mm -hmm. And he has not got it right. Why? Because of the sovereign will of God. Yes. Okay. That is the only reason it has not come to pass, because the sovereign will, same as I've been asking ministers and pastors here, and I say to them, why do you think, why do you think that God's judgment has not fallen on this nation yet, yet? And they're, well, yeah. you know, uh, because the prophecy, no, no, I said, why do you think God's, God's wrath has not fallen and judgment has not fallen upon this nation yet? It's because there are still righteous people before God in this nation. Yeah, sorry, just to lay a point out, you're in North Carolina, so people who are watching don't think that you're oh, oh, South sorry. Africa yeah. or still in Hong Kong. You're in okay, North, no, Carolina. North Carolina, USA. Sorry, yeah. I yeah. should have I should have reminded people. <laughs> that. And and the thing is, you people don't realize the debauchery that's going on in this nation. Yeah, you, you you just have to drive down the roads. The 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 police and that are cooking the books here of telling people how bad the crime is because they're not telling them how bad the crime is. You see, from my point of view, I would say that that is judgment. Um, I know that you know if you take Sodom and Gomorrah and you take the the, the bargain mm -hmm. of Abraham, there is that argument for. Um, you know, if there's one, if there's 10 righteous, if there's five righteous, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously there is, but I think that if I were to look at um, the judgment sense, I would say the current administration in America is an example of people being, because how, how, one of the ways in which you see God in scripture leave people to judgment or leave people to fall is to basically remove his hand of protection. 100 percent you know if you look at what's happening now and we were kind of sort of talking about it beforehand the fuel crisis that's exponential you know there's they say now in america and this is this is purely this president this is purely joe biden has done this and his administration i see this as kind of yes it's a willful move down there i think it's the willful move of wicked men but those who you know have screamed from the rooftops we want those wicked people in in power God, I personally see, has removed his hands to a certain degree. And he said, allows it. Get on with it and see yourself fall. 1951 compared to 2022. Now, we are, America is, uh, I think, double the population that it was in 1951. And they That's say right. currently 
the oil, uh, the diesel reserves are the same, right? So there's a hundred million uh, barrels of uh, diesel reserve that apparently, you know, uh, in, in 1951 would have lasted a hundred and something days. Compared to now, it lasts, it will, it's prospected to last the next 25 days. And then you'll see the shutdown of power stations and so on. And I'm not trying to scare people who are no, any no, no, like it's, Stephanie and so it's, on. Gary, who watch Gary, it. Truth, truth is truth. Okay. It is, yeah. No matter, no matter how much a person wants to cover it or whatever, truth is truth. You there is no there is no there is no getting around it. No. The, the fact remains is this nation has enough fuel reserves to be totally independent yeah, and all... being able to, to send out. Okay. Why, when we look at this administration, for argument's sake, mm -hmm. and, and, and the rulings that they are setting in place or putting into the thing, they are making this nation beholden to other nations. Yeah. Right. They're making this nation follow down a path that enriches them, but it sets the population in a, in a no-win situation. Mm -hmm. There's an anger that's being fueled that's underlying in this nation. The yeah. amount of shootings and killings and all these things that's taking place tells you, tells you, and as sad as it is, it tells you the moral state of this nation. Okay, the moral degradation state of this nation. All right, because it's a spiritual, it's it's a spiritual climate that is being fed and fueled. Yeah. Okay. But there's a but. The saddest part about this is that the so-called moral and spiritual leaders of this nation by and large, are silent and cowards, to put it bluntly, right? Because they're more worried about their own stuff than anything else. The, the sad reality is we're having people having conferences and getting together and all this, and I'm not seeing any of that changing the very places that they're having it in. Now, I, I, why, yeah. do, why do I say that? I want to just bring something up. And, and because it's it's not just close to Mart or dear to Mart, it's I've seen this in action. 20 odd years ago, 25 years ago, we went into a place in Africa. Uh -huh. We faced the most powerful witch doctor in the Southern Hemisphere. The whole areas around were beset with witchcraft and whatever. Yeah. And strife and whatever. We faced this witch doctor. God showed us we'd face the witch, doc witch doctor. We did. And he turned and he ran. 25 years later, that area is still free of witchcraft. That is the essence and the power of God when you operate and walk in obedience to him. But when you come with all the pseudo junk of you getting together and you're doing all those things, but yeah. yet there's no facilitation of the evidence of that area or those areas being changed, then you've got to ask the question. Are we actually hearing from God? Are we actually following the direction of the Holy Spirit? I would say, and this is this is a, a word that I believe the Holy Spirit has is, is provoked in me, that we are seeing, whether you'll see it as in terms of numbers, I'm not talking about. Sure, I'm not I'm talking about numbers either. Mm. I'm saying we are seeing the, the death of the American church. 100%. I, I could not agree with you more. And I don't mean just out of America, but I'd say every sort of like specifically evangelical uh, church around the world has adopted the same sort of model. Um, 100%. You know, and the, it, it, Western, it, the westernized model of, of Christianity. Yeah. And, and now what we're seeing is a move because I personally believe God is invoking fire in people to say that I want to remove you from just saying, I'm a church attender. I'm happy clappy. I do this. I sometimes. I'm a fired up it. disciple or son or daughter of the most high. God. Exactly. And the, the reason is, as you pointed it out earlier, because you pointed out that there's a demonic sort of 
infestation, the, the, the demonic has gained territory, and you're seeing this exponential growth in demonic territory across the world. And I personally believe that if that race is going on, then the church need to be fired up yes. for that race. So, so let me add, run to them, you know. Let me add, but let me add to this as well. The statements that I made is by no ways am I in any sh way, shape, or form am I disheartened or no, just no, yeah. I'm actually excited because yeah. in the midst of this, on Sunday, we had a student come up. Two other students brought the student up because this guy needed deliverance. Mm -hmm. And boy, did he get deliverance. And what's happening is there's a fire that's been released. Yes. In those who are surrendering themselves up willfully 100% to God, there's a fire that's been released. Mm -hmm. And a, a while back, I had, a, had an open vision of us standing on the battlefield and great darkness comes in and and even greater darkness is coming in and overwhelming the people yeah. Yeah. all of a sudden i see our arms getting extended and they and as our arms are extended through that darkness they start erupting into flame and i hear the word from the lord say cut around you yeah. and as we cut around us it creates a fire zone and as we cut it lets that whole area around within the arc of our arm that swivels around us. It sets that whole thing. And all of a sudden, those that are cutting, you start seeing their fire start intermingling with the others that are overlapping. Praise God. Okay. Why? Because when I look in scripture, that's exactly what scripture calls us to be. Okay. When I look and it says... Yeah. We are called to be the fiery, fiery men of God yeah. with the, the wind of the breath of his message on our lips. And when you've got the wind and you've got fire, guess what happens? When that wind blows upon that fire, what does it do? It fuels that flame to burn even brighter and it takes it further. Yeah. Okay. God is not wake, coming to waken, his ch waken this church. All right. And let I want to get that out and I want because I know I'm going to get detractors who's ever going to see this. I'm going to have guys going to come at me again about it, which is okay. God, there's not one place in scripture where God says he's coming to awaken his church. Yeah. But what he says, what it says is he's coming back for his bride without spot, without wrinkle and without blemish. Amen. What does that tell you? Who is that bride? It's those who have surrendered themselves unto the Lord, who is allowing him to purify them. Yeah. To bring total, total words of integrity that they will become walkers and livers of integrity before him, before God and of man. Uh -huh. They are fully consecrated to him. And because of that full consecration, the sanctification of Jesus will be found within them. And there will not be even a hint or a shadow. John 14, 30 says, Jesus said this, the prince of darkness is coming, but he has nothing in common with me. Yep. God is bringing about his people who have nothing in common with the darkness. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to be set apart. I, I actually am I'm finding now that those people who were maybe, you know, like people you've grown up with who have been in the church and so mm -hmm. on and so mm -hmm. forth, compared to those people who are just saved and gripping hold of that fire. It is different now. I think that one of the things that uh, historian William Federer says is that and he, I think he's quoting someone else when he says it, that when in times of crisis, people turn to Christ, there is a point that the darkness has. The darkness is not to consume you. The darkness is to show that 
this is your opportunity for you as a believer in Jesus Christ to shine brighter than you ever have, to actually be submitted to God, to be ready to die to your flesh, to shine in ways that you've never comprehended before. Whenever you go out to, to eat or whenever you are, are mm -hmm. talking to someone to learn to bless them in both terms of prayer and in and, and terms of how you communicate with them and actually in terms physically whatever way you can do it to actually be the salt and the light of the earth and I think that what we're seeing right now you have this continued you know I when I said the death of the the American church system and I meant it around the world I do think like I said I'm not talking numbers because it says in the end times that people will heap up for themselves Particulars of That's their right. That's right. And people will continue to seek that out, but it's more life coaching than it is, um, I guess, light, uh, eternal life enabling. Because you know, it's it's not doing the actual job. It's giving everybody a a, a puff piece a to and, and, and be happy mm. for you know a, a day or two, and then they're not able to to withstand the storm. And I'm trying to within victory, for instance, and I, you know. We're trying to make sure that the, ch the, the, the church is actually built up enough that whenever the storms of life come, they don't move. They're like the cedars of Lebanon. They don't move. Instead, they react differently than how the world reacts to the storms. They turn and smile whenever destruction comes. Whenever fear exactly. comes at them, they turn exactly. away about it and give it a laugh. Yeah. They're not afraid. They're not moved. And that's the call of the church. You know, we like we could go through loads of different things happening. You know, like like I said to you earlier that that you know, Bibi uh, Netanyahu is back in government, and that's a great thing when you look at the politics of it. Because, but also, because. one of the things to grab hold of in that is that one of the the the, the continued phrases out of Bibi's mouth is my my good friend Vladimir Putin, and whenever you look at Ezekiel thirty eight. Is that a move towards that? You know, is that going to be something that comes out to play because of their close relationship? And this, like you're saying about the how America's going, the separation because Joe Biden is just going down the toilet and there's no connection between him and Netanyahu. I don't think they would even speak to each other if they had the opportunity. No. And it's, it's amazing to see all this play out. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that in this, you will see, I think, two factions grow. Mm -hmm. You will see the false church yes. that will be in yes. line with the state, that will put That's statehood correct. as God, which is more in line with uh, the false faith of Mithraism and things like That's that. That's right. All, the, all the Eastern mysticism the remnant. Like. Yeah. yeah. But here, here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's look at the story for argument's sake of Peter. Okay. Yeah. Or let's look at two different stories. Let's look at the story of we start with with um, uh, Stephen the martyr. Yeah. And we look how how these stories have been told in a in a way that is not according to scripture. Okay. According to scripture, Stephen the martyr had a short lifespan but a full lifespan. Right. He didn't have many converts, but he had the greatest convert there was. Yeah. Saul of Tarsus who became Paul. Yeah. Right. But what is also ascribed to Stephen is this. Besides the fact that he was given the grace to go through what he needed to go through, that God was with him no matter what, and he was fully entrenched on the rock of all ages. That's why his face became radiant even when he was being yeah. stoned. Yeah. Okay. But also, the apostles at that stage were more interested in, in having a holy huddle in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And because of the stoning of, of Stephen the martyr, Paul, who was then still Saul, goes and says, I need this piece of paper to go into the homes to take more out. And, and so he gets the paper. And what happens? The disciples or the apostles get dispersed. Yeah. The problem we've got in, in, in not just in America, but in the westernized church today is the issue of complacency and compromise. Okay. 
So they're stuck in their complacent ways. They're okay with what they're doing because, you know, we don't want to, sh we, we don't want to shake too many things and we don't want to cause too many eruptions when it's exactly the opposite of what we're called to do. Yeah. Jesus didn't, Jesus himself said, I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Okay. The sword of the division that he was bringing was to divide those who are his and those who are not his. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's no niceties in it. Absolutely no niceties, whatever. If your Christianity is nice, guess what? I would even offer this, that you're not even a believer. Now, people say, oh, John, that's really harsh. Yeah, right? It is. Because I, show me anywhere, show me any one of the disciples that had a nice death. True, right. yeah. And isn't God the same God of today, tomorrow, and forever? So whatever was foretold, we see history replay itself. It's the same but with grace. Exactly. Because with grace, you know, nowadays under, you know, the modern uh, kind of church approach to grace is that, you know, we don't need to, to do anything as a body. We just need to be because we're under grace. That night, I, I believe wholeheartedly I am saved by grace. I did not uh, deserve uh, 100%. it. 100%. We're on the same page again. But they're taking the word, they're taking what it is, and they're and just they misconstrue it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You look at Paul, Paul, who was stoned, who was exactly. beaten, flogged, and prisoned, yeah. who was shipwrecked, who was near death's door so many times. Many times, yeah. Yeah. And he says that he preached by the grace of God. Exactly. Grace the equipping for the storm, the grace that is that is in uh, you know the undeserved, unmerited favor that I have from God is the equipping is the equipping for what comes against me as well on this earth. It is the it is how I am saved, and it is it is literally it is my it's it's not that I go well I'm under grace I don't need to do anything. It's no I am under grace I get to follow the Lord exactly when we should not be uh, have that right yeah. to follow. you see the difference is in that way it says um it is the gift of god right yeah the problem if we've got today is very few people take it and understand the privilege of that gift their problem is they take it as an entitlement yeah when you take it as an entitlement, it means I don't have to do anything. I'm just going, so I can live a debaucherous life. I can do whatever, and I'm still going to have it. No, you're not. You you are yeah. you are very. I, I like to use this terminology. You are you are a special kind of stupid if you think that's going to happen. A special kind, because when you take God's word and you misconstrue it for what it is, the scripture is clear. Do not add anything. Do not take anything away. Do yeah. not twist it that it's not. Don't bring all those things because that's when you mock and you scoff God, who's the author yeah. of his word. Okay. And there is a thing that says you're not going to get free from this. Yeah. You're not going to get free. Let's look at the second. Let's look at the second one. Peter, Jesus just fed the 5,000. They saw out of their own eyes. A miracle appeared before them, before them that as he just broke, it just kept on. So much so that there was abundance left over. God's yeah. grace is abundant in that same measure. He doesn't just feed us. He gives us abundance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Jesus commands him, because if you look in the original writing, when Jesus said to him, go to the other side, it was a command for them to get in the boat and push off in where? In stormy seas. Not in nice Nice, calm waters in stormy seas. But we never asked the question, was Jesus, okay, I'll get rid of the crowd. How was Jesus going to get to the other side? Yeah. We never asked that question. And I never hear anybody asking that question. Uh, was there another boat that he was going to, there was another group, doesn't say that. He couldn't walk around because there's no way he would have got to the other side if he could walk around by the time. It was positioning them to see a great miracle or one of the greatest miracles mm -hmm. of a man other than Jesus walk on water. Yeah. Okay. So in the middle, between three and six, he comes walking from the other side. It says they see him. Then they get afraid because they think it's an apparition. Yeah. They see him. They recognize that this was Jesus. 
Look where we are today in the, as, as a body of Christ. We see that as Jesus. We recognize that Jesus, and then we want to be afraid because we think it's an apparition. Yeah. All right. So what is it? What happened? If it's you, Lord, Mister Motormouth opens up his mouth, and uh, he's the only one that's always putting his both feet yeah. in his mouth. Okay. Well, everybody oh, else just keeps quiet. Everybody's yeah. exact. Yeah. He says, "Lord, if this is you, beckon me to come." And as soon as the Lord speaks, his fear goes away. Mm -hmm. And he gets out the boat. But here's what the scripture says. He's walking towards Jesus. He perceived. How much of our problems today is because of the perception that we are under? Yep. And not the reality of what the word says. Okay. Because we simply don't know the word. And therefore, if we don't know the word, we don't know him who is the author of the word. Okay. Then compromise and the light comes in. Uh -huh. So here we go. So Peter, it says he perceives, then he saw, then he sank. Yeah. Because your perception and my perception is always going to lead us to something else or not the fullness of what the truth yeah. is. And when we do that, we are easily swayed whichever way the, and whichever way the cookie crumbles, we're going to fall. I think it's, it, it, it's very evident why we're told to walk by faith and not by sight. Exactly. Because perception can be can easily lead to deception. I personally have said this about this year. Um, you know, this year has is the growing of a deceptive nar narrative. Mm, very and much so. I've seen it in so many ways. That even like we, we were at Halloween there. And, you know, we as a family, we abstain from it. You know, we do other mm -hmm. things. And, but the amount of, actually, you know, churches that I, that I respect. Yeah, and, exactly. You still, still embrace this and run with it. And then even if you look at what's happening, like the WEF, the World Economic Forum, coin. Yeah. Now, it seems to be that those who are operating off a demonic um, agenda seem to actually be uh, quite open and upfront with what they're doing. There's no more fear the of church. God. Yeah, exactly. That's and, and the church, the body of Christ, seems to be passive. And they they named 2022 the year of the great narrative. That's and correct. What seeing is the likes of this, like I said, this climate change issue being mm -hmm. pushed. Mm -hmm. The likes of you know, even if you watch there, the the Department of Homeland Security. Um, now I'm yeah. over here, so I figured yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. That's where you yeah. are. The, the DHS, there's already been um, a breaking report brought out by uh, Lee Fang, who's an investigative journalist. And this guy brought this out, showing how over the last three years, the Department of Homeland Security has been heavily involved with the help of, and we, we all suspected it, with the, the big help tech of, and all of them. the big mm -hmm. tech to censor everything from exactly. a certain president's sons exactly. to the Ukraine-Russian conflict and certain factors about that, to the pandemic and to-, to every everything. conservative voice exactly. that is in alignment with their narrative. And as that, as that censorship increases, the church seems to, like, I'm not talking, like, when I say about the church, I actually think there are so many amazing men and women of God who are running for Christ. But I'm talking about probably, as I'm saying this, the ones in the media's perspective, mm -hmm. the ones that get, that have got the biggest platforms. Now, they've got the biggest platforms because they're kind of playing ball with what- Because they compromised. Yeah, yeah, because if they were saying something that was against, um, I guess, the narrative that is being pushed, then they would be censored too. And but the here's the thing, Gary. If they had, if they would, if if they had stood tall and strong and had spoken against it, half of that narrative would not come to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the uh, that, that's the other point. So here's so Peter, he starts to sink. Jesus rebukes his, oh, you have little faith. Cries out, grabs hold of him. But here's the thing. Every pastor that has ever, that I know of, that I've heard bring this message has always spoken about Peter doubting. And not about, not about the fact that he was the only the second man who walked on water. 
But here's yeah. the point. Because I've here's tried the... it and I can't do it. So I'm just... <laughs> oh, believe me, yeah, we, I, I, I think you and I are on the same page. I both, we both tried it and we got pretty wet. Yep. So um, here's the thing. This is the other part of it that never gets brought. The Lord grabs hold of him. Yep. As the promise that the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Number one. Number two, the Lord gets hold, uh, grabs hold of him, and they both return to the boat. Nowhere does it say that Jesus picked him up and carried him on his shoulders, picked him up in his arms. They both return to the boat. Wow, I never thought of that. Okay, he not only walked to the Lord on the water, he walked with the Lord back on the water to get in the boat. Wow. Okay, That's, that's a good message right there. Okay. So why is that such important? Because here's the thing. When you look to Jesus and you keep your eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. you will firstly not have a perception that will sway you. Yeah. Secondly, you will not falter. Thirdly, if you do, he will hold you up because mm -hmm. he says he will hold you up with, bear you with the authoritative right hand. Yeah. Third, uh, fourthly, he will be walking with you through it. Yeah. Jesus is calling us at this pre present moment. I believe the Lord is calling us at this present moment, and especially us as ministers of the gospel, to get out of the safety and security of our boats and yeah. to get into the stormy seas of life so that the greatest miracle can come to pass. Amen. Okay. And that's what he's calling us, not to look at what's going on in the world. And I'm not saying we mustn't be alert and attentive to it. I'm not, yeah. that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying our problem is we are trying to cast a half an eye on Christ. And we're trying to cast another half an eye on the things that's going on. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to falter and you're going to sink just like Peter did. But when we focus on him, is he not the revealer of all things? Yes. So if we focus and stay our focus on him, guess what? Then we will feel we will have more revelation than ever before. And, and it will unfold and be unyielded to us like never before. And we will become and be like the men of Issachar, who not only recognized the signs at the time, they knew what to do in it. In the same way, the mighty woman of Deborah, the mighty woman like Deborah will arise. Mighty warrior woman with great wisdom. Because combined, we need that. What we're having at this present moment, we've got these all these scattered things taking place. How do you how do you think of the Ukrainian war at the moment? A yeah. small force like the Ukrainian army is now setting a large invading force like the Russian army to flee. Why? Well, I, I'm not, I'm not a wholly ba um, behind the narrative of that. No, no, uh, no. But let me quantify yeah. it. Okay, I'm using this as a point of reference, not for anything. Yeah, yeah. Because God is not looking for a whole bunch of people. Uh -huh. He's looking for those who will stand up with Him and simply follow Him, and you will set, just like the Israeli army would set thousands fleeing would be going up against the strongest forces that they were and bring destruction to them mm -hmm. that i'm using it from that point i'm oh I'm I, not, I get i get what you're saying i was just i'm not bringing i i see there's yeah. a far greater thing at play at the present moment with mm -hmm. regard to ukraine and russia and that's a topic for another day to discuss yeah. because there's a lot to discuss on that which i think a lot of people are missing out on I'm just, just using it from. I, the, I just think that what you're there. saying, I completely get that our eyes, like that's what I I've been preaching is that our, you know, you have to be a presence person in this time. Mm. You have to be an, a a focuser, like your eyes laser focused on Jesus, because we're in the atmosphere in the the, the actual storm of deception. Yes, and deception is raining and, and uh, rearing its head with like one wave of deception over a war, one wave of deception over disease, one wave exactly. of deception exactly. over this. And it becomes, like you say, you're going like a, a what I call a spiritual squirrel. You know, you're following <laughs> the message and you're going, what's happening over here? But <laughs> you, in, the, in the midst of that, you can be aware of it all. 
There we go. In the prayer, like you said there, walking with him in the midst of the storm. Exactly. You know, there's this guy, um, I'm sure you've seen him. Uh, they called him the the Yanuka, the and he's been identified as a, a Messiah, the Messiah, mm-hmm. in uh, Israel right now. And I know there's been this fervor around it and stuff like that, but this is Mark thirteen twenty two. The you know this is Matthew twenty four. It's it's the labor exactly. pains, exactly. and it's where to expect all this. And it says, what is the very first part? of the Olivet Discourse, when we know that we are in the end times and the time, when I'm talking about the end times, not the tribulation, the end time for the church age. Yes. Yes. Jesus's instruction is, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Exactly. We are in the great distraction of deception. Everything is a distraction. Everything is a distraction. And the thing is, if we're going to walk around after a while, you're going to get a stiff neck. Ah, I mean, you can't. Acts uh, 751. Exactly. People who come exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's exactly what's taking place at this present moment in the body of Christ. Yeah. Okay. Stiff you neck. Think, uh, I agree with that. But do you not think there's also people who are stiff necked? Not because they're looking at everything, but because their head is in the sand. Of course, like Look, ostrich, you know, let, just... let, let's understand when when we talk about stiff neck stoic, it means they are stubborn to the core. Yeah. Okay. So they will not they will not see anything outside of where they are stuck. Yeah. Okay. And you can do whatever you want to. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. How many of those people are like that because God has allowed them to become like that because of their discontinued disobedience? Yeah. You see, we've got to understand this, that, that well, you, God is the one that's blinding and causing people to stay in certain things because they refuse every aspect that he's brought to them. We just have to go read that in the book of Hebrews. Do you not think there's also a pattern in that in the sense that for, for like I know in my walk and everybody I talk to, the more you listen and are led by the Holy Spirit, the easier it is to discern what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Of course. Now, I, I personally, I, I we warned about this last night, people who consider themselves purely Holy Spirit people, not no, so word on, people. It is the combination of the both. It is word That's and Holy Spirit together. Equal measure. Equal but measure. Obedience increases your ability to hear, whereas disobedience... Yes. You know, yes. it, 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 it provides deafness it, for the, the it spirit. It closes off the ears. Yes. Yeah. Because. That's why he says I require obedience rather than sacrifice. Or, 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 yeah. yeah. Put, put away these things. I'm not interested in you bringing me sacrifice. I'm not. whatever. Obedience. Obedience above all else. We've spoken about this before. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel. Yeah. Okay. They declared in their hearts. Mm-hmm. That not, so this is not a lip service. They declared in their hearts that they would be obedient to God, come what may. Yeah. Okay. That is the, the wording that they use. Come what may means to be steadfast no matter what. Mm-hmm. All right. Never save them from the lion's den. Never save them from the fire. But he was with them in it so much so that two heathen kings had to declare, had to declare that he was the one true God. Let's talk about Nineveh. Yeah. Jonah, much of the church is like Jonah. They don't want to go down that road. Yeah. But Jonah had had to be in the fish for three days. Man, my goodness, how he got, he might, how he must have smelt when he came out of there after three <laughs> days is, is enough to be off putting for anybody. But what, what, is, what is the miracle that comes out of that? That a, a debaucherous nation, more debaucherous than Sodom and Gomorrah, even their evil king has to bow his knee and make a declaration. Yeah. So where does that leave us, Gary? God is calling us where we are positioned. We are called, number one, to bloom where we are planted. That's number one. And not flit off wherever we want to go to. Yeah. 
because we it's time for us to redig redig the ancient wells just like Isaac yeah. redug the yeah. ancient wells of his father yeah. because the Philistines had stopped up the blessing that was supposed to be extended throughout the generations mm -hmm. we have got to get to our areas and we've got to say Lord show us what is the principality that's ruling in our area what is the principality that is stopping up the water well from your waters of your generational blessing from coming to pass in our area? Yeah. But we don't do that. We, 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 we follow like blind sheep. Because we, we, we want, but we don't want. It's now it's time for you and I and whoever else to stand up and say, I don't care the consequences. Exactly. I don't care the consequences because when I follow after him, he takes care of the consequences. Mm -hmm. It's not as well that the, the one thing that I keep trying to remind people of, we are living in, in times that are historic. You know, we're living in times that probably I personally, I, I think it'll continue to get darker, but at the same time, I don't think there's been any times really like that. There was never a time where the world was completely locked down. There was never a time in which you saw so much disinformation, so much of, of, of control building, you know. Mm. But God has equipped you for this time. Of course, yeah, fact, that's the whole point. Before the time was created, we were born, we were uh, ordained that, you know, if he's picking his his, his starter team or his, his army or whatever, and he, and he says, right, I'm going to put you in the war at that time. And, you know, this is the year of 573. That's year right. The mill. And this mm -hmm. is the year that we've, we've called, you know, given the name of the year of the spiritual camels. Those That's who correct. are equipped to go into the sandstorm because they are bodily ready, those who are carrying the word in the presence of God and going from the will because we've all drawn from that well of oath and ready to go. And not only that, they've been watered by the word. Yes. Okay. So in the midst of all of this, all the lockdowns and all the COVID and all this, we find ourselves in a time in America, 49 years plus one. 49 years ago, in January 1973, a wrong was declared right, Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Okay. January 2022 was 49 years. Yeah. In the ensuing months after that, Roe versus Wade, the wrong is now made right. Not overturned, the wrong is made right. Why is that important? Because in the midst of it all, the nations of the world are in no doubt who made that wrong, that right, or that wrong right. Yeah. What did we also have in there? Those so-called stones in Georgia. Yeah. That mysteriously blew up. And they still today can't find any source of why it did. Yeah. Hmm? Why do you think that is? We, they've got midterm elections in the midst of the year of Jubilee. Yeah. Because God is busy with his great reset. And those who take hold of it will continue with it. And those who don't will not face another opportunity to get it back. I'm not a prophet of doom. No, I, I agree with you. I'd say that but when I look at the signs, my brother, and I see what the word is saying, it lines yeah, up. Yeah. That is what it's about. And what you what you've been teaching, I wish more people would actually listen to what you're teaching. Right. Okay. Because what you bring in of the historical facts, you bring in that historical facts to life. It is 100% spot on. But there are very few that are doing that. Yeah. Okay. Very few are doing that. Because people couldn't be care less about history. But the problem is history has always got a way <laughs> of coming yeah. to pass again. Yeah. Because we simply haven't learned from biblical history. 
Yeah. I'm not talking about man-made history. I'm yeah. talking about history. Okay. But then you've got the other nutcases on the other side. Let me put it this way. Who come with all their spiritual jargon. Yeah. And it's causing confusion. And people that are, are blocking their ears to it because it's so much mumbo jumbo that it doesn't bring enlightenment to the ears of their spirit. Uh -huh. Okay. But we soldier on with our feet shod with the word of truth. Yeah. See, everybody makes talks about putting on the full armor, but stop. You can put all that armor on, but if you have not, your feet have not been shod with the word of truth, that armor means nothing. Uh -huh. Because you will you will walk through this life with feet of bronze yeah. and brass. And we know what that represents. Yeah. It is now time for us to pull out our swords, extend them to heaven, and let him set them ablaze. Yeah. And not return the sword to the scabbard again. Because we don't have the time anymore. Amen. We don't have that time. And sometimes that sword needs to cut the strains that other people cannot get free from. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it taking place on a campus where my daughter goes, which is supposed to be a Christian campus. So the only thing that's Christian about it is the name that they put a bit of a tag of Christian, because believe me, it's not. Yeah, yeah. There's demonic stuff taking place. And now these guys that I'm busy mentoring, they are recognizing and they are starting to walk on their campus and do something about it. That's see that, that what you're just saying. That's what we do. Like I said, that's what I believe that the call upon the church is, you know, you don't, if, if, if this is the time of spiritual warfare, hmm? you don't go in with just one person equipped or two people equipped. You equip everyone. We you went and we done a, a, an Ignite program for six weeks after our first service just ended up having guys in there and we just imparted upon them, prayed for them, declared, prophesied over them. And then we took them all out in the street. There we go. And they there all split go. up into teams. Some went into shops and started talking to people in shops and witnessing and praying with people. Some stood on the street corners and got megaphones and preached. Other people uh, just went round and anybody they found, they just prayed and declared over. We went round and we declared over people who were, you know, just words of wisdom, words of prophecy, healing, mm. uh, you know, mm. the demonic mm. manifestations and stuff. And it was just, to, this is the point, is this is the walk that we're called to do daily. But I think there's been such a, a, even though there was the Reformation, so this is going back to your reset, even though there was the Reformation, I don't think the church moved much past the Reformation. It was still a case of the few. Teach, That's right. The few That's right. Impart, That's right. And the rest receive. That's exactly. not the Reformation. That's not the oh, universal yes. priesthood. And see, when you said about, you know, the world is looking to reset. And actually, when we talked about Rishi Sunak, the first tweet that went out about Rishi Sunak from one of the MPs was, now, this is fantastic that Sunak is now Prime Minister, now is the time for the reset. No, it's not. It's time for the reformation of the church. Yes. It's time for the church to walk reformed, not just be reformed, but walk reformed. Walk yes, can, I, can I add to that? I believe it's even more than that. I believe it's time for the transfiguration. Okay. Because the reformation... Yeah, had, has not worked, not because it does not work. It has not worked because of the people. Now it's time for the transfiguration, because yeah. when you are transfigured, you never return to the original. You never return back to the state from which you were. Praise transfigured. God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I believe it's time for the transfiguration where the burning ones are seen for who they are. Mm -hmm. Fully entrenched and fully encapsulated in and through the blood of Jesus, where they will not return. Because you see, with any reformation, you can still turn it back. No, I, I'm or on with you, yeah. The transfiguration, you can't turn it back. I, do, do you know what's amazing? It just, just as you're saying that, the transfiguration happened Matthew 17 on the mountain. So he goes mm. up the mm. mountain. Peter, mm. James, and John watch. Uh, Moses and Elijah, Elijah appear with him. And... It's the, the voice from heaven. The voice of the Father says, this is my son. Hear him. Yes. 
You know? Exactly. And the problem exactly. is there's so many distracting voices. And what was pointed out in our mentoring group yesterday, as someone brought this up, that we talked about they're going to Mount Sinai November 13th. Mm. But we mm. also, the other day, the four highest peaks in the UK, they had uh, like this sort of worship ceremony, festival of lights type thing, mm. you know, mm. which is you know, the festival of lights and Hinduism is Diwali. Yeah, it, exactly. The same day Diwali that uh, Rishi Sunak was appointed prime minister on Diwali. And it's a false light. It comes from the light of Atman, which means... Um, That's the right. Light of, you, do you know that America... Is, knowledge. Do you know that next year America wants to de de declare a holiday for that? That's it, yeah. But this, the, 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 and, and do you not think that this is the position? This is what keeps appearing to me. You said there about the transfiguration. And I think that's now, and the, the word I've been getting, and this is where, you know, the, the Holy Spirit speaks corporately, but we're Amen. all parts of one exactly. we hear in part. Exactly. You know, I've heard for the last two years, time to go up the mountain. It's time to go up the mountain. <laughs> and the mountain is synonymous with going into the presence of God. And you're here in transfiguration. It's time for you to go up the mountain because God's going to show his glory through you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, at the same time, the realms of darkness are trying to position themselves. You know, if you're if you're seeing the spiritual warfare manifest into the physical, you're hmm. seeing position themselves were on mountains, Mount Sinai, the four peaks over here. Because when you go from the mountaintop, what you see, you see from a heavenly perspective and not from an earthly perspective. You exactly. move from that so that you see it in the entirety. You don't see it in a small measurement of a bowl yeah. you're going you and i go into a shopping a shopping mall that's got multiple floors you walk in at the bottom you know there are shops on those different floors but you can't see them yeah. go up to the top floor and how much do you see yeah and the problem is the church was supposed to be taken up but it's allowed itself to become low down because exactly. they were supposed to see from the heavenly perspective to bring about the vision of God that has been envisioned like this. But no, you're trying to come and take something from here and put it here. Yeah. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work, Gary. And that's, and that, my brother, I agree with you 100%. God is busy speaking to us as individuals around the world. The same thing because it's his voice yeah. is not changeable. Yeah. His voice stays the same. His message stays the same. Even when God brings a reset, he's brought the reset according to his original plan. Yeah. He's not changing it. And the, and the issue is simply, I believe that we even more so in the ensuing month to maybe a year or so, we're going to see even a greater amount mm -hmm of division yeah between the true body of christ and the fake that it will be so evident yet people are going to ask why are they not seeing it because god has blinded them well i i believe wholeheartedly in what you say or you're saying i believe it has to happen because of course it is. Every, you know, the Bible tells you Ecclesiastes 3, there's nothing new under the, under the heavens, nothing new under the sun. And when we talk about the Moedim of prophecy, the prophecy is pattern. Mm -hmm. 68 BC, Antioch Epiphanes, the, the kind of only real, other than Nimrod, historical type that we have for an Antichrist who committed an abomination of desolation in the Holy of Holies. Who was it that brought him? to jerusalem it was it was one section of believers there, there was the split between the hellenistic believers that's right and that's the right believers and the that's hellenistic right. believers who wanted to adopt greek culture and right. their faith system intertwined within this yeah. yeah we're getting annoyed at these super zealot devout believers who mm -hmm. just wanted to live for god live for jehovah that they got so upset that they went and they got this Syrian leader, Antioch Epiphanes. That's and, correct. And, and then they basically brought in this Antichrist figure who committed horrendous crimes, murdering, you know, just destroying people and committed the abomination of desolation. I believe mm. that has to happen. 
Yes. I believe the, as the remnant grows, you'll see the division grow, like you say, but you'll see this church that is more in line with state. Yeah. It's okay. So we, we uh, everybody talks about separation of church and state. Yeah. Okay. And that's not exactly what Jesus talks about. And that's not what the scripture talks about. He talks about being set apart for the kingdom. Exactly. Okay. He came down and he established his kingdom. He left his kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. He did not remove it. We now, I believe what we're coming into is we're coming into the true royal priesthood, as you said earlier on, in the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. Why is that important? Because a royal priesthood in that measurement will not be moved from the mandate that they're being given. Exactly. Okay. The royal priesthood is not set and worried about position, place, power, buildings, and the like. They are worried about one thing, extension of his kingdom. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. What we see today, you and I are to live our lives to the fullness in that kingdom because we're not taking it with us to heaven. Yeah. That is not a measurement like others have been teaching. Oh, no, that's something that we will do in heaven. No, it's not. That's what we are to live here. Mm -hmm. In spite of what is going on in world orders and the like. You, what is our purpose, Gary? Our purpose is the same purpose that's been in, in, inscribed in scripture from the very beginning and not according to Rick Warren's purpose-driven nonsense and junk. Okay, our purpose is one purpose. It is to make the power of God manifest so all might know it. Yeah. And the second part, so that we may be like him. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose. How it comes to pass in what avenue God chooses to use us in, whether God takes us in a measurement down this road or down that road, that's up to God to decide. Yeah. And it comes back to what I said to you. When we focus on Jesus, we will walk out it with Jesus. Yeah. But when we focus on all the other stuff, then we miss out on the very value system that God has entrenched in us. We have missed out so much on the value of all the things that the book of the, the Old Testament brought. Because we've subjected it to our figment of our imagination that we don't need it. We are not the new Jews. We are not the new Jerusalem. We're not going to be the new Israelites. However, what was the value system that was entrenched in the Holy of Holies? What was the value system of the priest wearing the priestly garment? What was the value system? of the feasts of the tabernacles and all these things what was the value system that we are missing out on today because we've simply subjected it with the measurement of our imagination and we have not allowed the consecration of our imagination yeah therefore by default by default, we've allowed the prophetic movement to become a demonic movement yeah i'd agree with that yeah okay and when we start saying oh it's now the time for the prophetic movement forget it you're missing out you never have the prophetic movement without the apostolic movement you can't separate them because it's foundational in its measure okay yeah. and now we've got people saying oh no we were finished with the apostolic now we're in the prophetic no we're not the apostolic and the prophetic lie like this because it's the apostolic that holds the prophetic in check mm -hmm. otherwise the prophetic goes over into the demonic yeah so oh, sorry go ahead so we are now again i'll come back to the point we made from the beginning we are at a pivotal point in our time like never before it is critical that we get to the place or we get the people to the place that they are fully, fully entrenched in him and him alone. That they do not look left. They do not look right. They keep their eyes focused on Christ because if you think that you can keep one eye on him, you will fall. Yeah. You will fall, and it doesn't matter how long you've been walking with God or how entrenched you are in Scripture or how much you know Scripture, you will fall. Mm -hmm. 
Because remember, we had the deceiver coming to the Garden of Eden in a place where there was no consciousness of sin. And he caused God's early creation to fall yeah. in the place where there was no consciousness of sin. Right. We who are stuck in the consciousness of sin. It's so much easier to fall. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The first thing is because of our time, we've done a, we've been speaking for over an hour and 20 minutes now. Sure. Um, I'm going to say if anybody has any questions, just to, to throw a question up now, if you have any questions, I've yeah. been trying to keep an eye on things to see if anything comes through. I haven't. I might have missed some, but uh, I haven't. If you've got a question, there is a wee bit of a, a lag here, so I'll give it a couple of seconds. If you have a question, now is the time to throw it up. And as they're doing that, I'm just going to say, look, I've, I've really enjoyed this. You know, I have enjoyed it too, my brother. I love you, and I think that this is, is great when we get a chance to actually chat. I think this we've done videos before. <laughs> I think this is actually the only one we've done live. Yes. As in yes. streaming live. Kind of, yes. Know? Yeah. And, and I think by far, by far, what we've discussed today, um, I, I just, in my spirit, I just feel it has so much, it, it, it has had so much more impact. Yeah, yeah. Because... Uh, you uh, just I want to come back to something that you said earlier about salt and I, I just want to leave it with the, with the or I just want to bring this up we know that salt is is abrasive number one yeah. salt is a good cleaner number two salt is a good preserver but what about the aspect of salt being an influencer that was the name of my sermon on Sunday. <laughs> okay. We, we, we simply haven't gone down the road of what it means to be walking as the salt of influence. Yeah. And when we get that right, we will see stuff taking place like we've never seen it before. Well, I heard, I, I preached on Sunday and I, I talked about how Satan is a, an influencer. We know that. Mm -hmm. He influenced yeah. the third of the heavenly host to fall. He That's influenced right. Eve in the garden. But he is nothing in comparison to the light of God. Exactly. Where a third fell, two thirds were, remained. When they were influenced in the garden, he brought about his redemption story before time. So That's that right. he influenced the world in such a great way. And you know, it's, it's understanding that we too are meant to influence Iron sharpens iron. You know, you're not to sit in the seat of the scornful, stand in the ways of the wicked. You know, you're you're to meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. So sure. that you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of living waters. Amen. So Amen. Reef in any season. This is what we're to do. And I just think that this is, you know, this has been great tonight. I think that you're right. We are to influence. And I think part of that influence is when we're dying to ourselves. Amen. By being on the mountain, aka in his presence. Amen. And him transfiguring us, us. and showing Amen. his his doxa glory to that's to correct. That's know. correct. So it it's that's why people say to me, John, why do you when, when you minister, you bring so much scripture? I said, because that is the very foundation and the source for too yeah. long. The body of Christ has been operating on commentary and opinion and interpretation, taking a little piece of the scripture and wrapping it with the commentary and the interpretation and then throwing it out as the gospel. That is a lie. And that's why people are, are being still stuck in their stuff and not getting freedom. I think it, that's the point is that's the water being in you that, that you, you know, I get accused of this and the guys who work the desk in the church don't like it because I'll give them maybe four or five scriptures but i'll use maybe 15 you know and they're going um <laughs> uh, we, 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 what do we <laughs> but but I, this is this is what I, I i try and get through to people this is not you know when you're preaching like that or when you're sharing the word that is not a show that is exactly. who we are that is exactly. who we are is to be so it's the same you know that, like I'll, I'll finish with this. I'll tell you a story. That, that's being led by the Spirit, Gary. Yeah, that's it being is. led yeah. by the Spirit. Because you and I can have those scriptures, but the Holy Spirit, who's the, the, who's the revealer of all things, who is the Spirit of truth that leads us into all truth, he knows what the hearts of the people require. Yeah. You and I don't. 
I say to people from my side, I'll leave you with this. When I minister and I get given the opportunity and the privilege and honor to minister, I'm not ministering to the people. I'm ministering back to God and Amen. God is ministering to the yeah. people. And yeah. if anybody wants to tell me that they are ministering to people, they need to have their heads read. Yeah. We don't know the heart of man. God knows the heart of man. Yeah. So why would we, why would God give an imperfect person like you and me the, the, the right to minister to a heart of somebody that we can't see? He won't do that. That's not how God operates because no. he's a God of order. Yeah. So we simply minister back to him and he ministers to them. See, I find it with me as well is that you know, when you like you're in love with your wife, I'm in love with my wife and you talk about your wife like I would talk about my wife. If you're in love with Jesus, you, you want to talk about shut, him. Yeah, you don't you <laughs> want to shut up about him. And I find exactly. that it's, it's funny because Kelly is my wife is a talker and she likes to have like we're talking for an hour and a half and I'm accusing her of being a talker. But <laughs> When you get in the company, like she'll tr always try and bring me in, like introduce me to people. Yeah. I am actually very quiet until I can get the conversation in some way about God. going in Jesus way. I yeah. don't want to talk about the weather. I don't want to talk about anything else. I want to bring it back to Jesus. And then I get excited when you start. Yeah. Like I love so when someone else, you know, and you, you spark and someone else has got a revelation of Jesus in this way because God's appeared in this way uh, yeah. through their yeah. testimony and through the, how he's worked his glory through their lives. Amen. And Amen. I share mine and it's just like, wow, this is just amazing. It's all glory to him. And Amen. I think that's, that's, you know, that's the mark of what we need to be. We need to just be filled with that water. So, it so is, we can give it out all the time. We yeah. Just continue flowing out. Exactly. So we're an hour and a half and, you know, it's yeah. been great. It really has. Um, I can't see questions. I can see a lot of comments. Can't see Not a problem. Uh, fixing our eyes upon Jesus. Look, full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow streaming in the light of his glory, of his grace. Glory. Mm -hmm. Make sure you keep the, the more than sharper two-edged sword out at all times. Take down the devil with fiery, devil's fiery arrows of the devil. That's um, right. Yeah, there's lots of comments. I can't see questions. I did tell you, okay. if you put a question, put a question at the front because I'll miss it. Um, <laughs> so I am going to, we're going to say goodbye. And yeah. like, I'll catch up with you soon. And we'll just do it privately, just off the off okay. Um As you might have guessed, I do not really still, I'm not very technically minded. I need somebody operating all this stuff. Um, as, as you saw at the start when I... <laughs> And we suddenly started and you were on your own and I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> I, I'm still talking. I, just, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to speak or not. No, so I'm, I'm still talking on a screen. And I thought, <laughs> how ignorant is he? He's not even responding to me. And I and then I realized I wasn't live. My camera was off and everything. So, <laughs> so whenever I click off here, unfortunately, it's not just going to take us off Facebook, it will end the conversation. That's fine. But, you know, it's been great, brother. It really has. It really is, Gary. Thank you so much for, for doing this. I appreciate it. It's it's such an honor and a privilege to be able to just speak and, and bring the unction of our Lord yeah. um, in the things that we do. So and, and we trust that people who are listening, people that are that will hear, people that will see this, that out of this, they'll be able to 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 have things from the Lord spoke, speaking to them. Yeah. It's not that the Lord can't speak to them directly. Of course he does. Course but, you know, yeah. sometimes God does things in a thing like this. And it just, wow, I didn't realize it. Like we were talking about, the, yeah. you didn't realize about Jesus the walking, back, the walking you know? back. No. So, um, yeah. So it, thank you once again. It's a, it's a privilege. Yeah. I know we don't do it often enough. But it's always so good when we do. So I appreciate it. Please, uh, Lord, let, let your blessing flow upon my brother and his family. I speak to the health of, of, of my brother, Gary. He's been struggling with his, with his uh, chest. I speak now to it. And I say to you, chest, you have no authority to close up. You have no authority to not bring fullness of air. I say to you, lungs, I tell you now, I command you in the name of Jesus to expand Better than it ever was before. 
because you wrote Gary's story in your book, Lord, according to Psalm 139. You wrote his story in your book before you fearfully and wonderfully fashioned him in his mother's womb. So, Father, I'm calling for that story to come to pass. And that story is the fullness of life. In the fullness of what you wrote it, I call forth for the the rest of my brother's life, that that story will come to pass, not with those things that the enemy would want to harm and bring harm and and steal from him, especially not his breath. Now, breathe your breath into him right now, Father God. Renew your breath that's already in him. Renew it to full capacity. And let this iniquity no longer have any sway in his body. So I say to you, iniquity, in the name of Jesus, I revoke your authority and I cast you out. And I say, body, obey and come into the full alignment of the word of God and be healed now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I really appreciate that. I do. And it's been great. And look, yes. we, we will catch up very soon. We will definitely do so. Okay, my brother. Love you guys. Please send love to Victory Church. Uh, I'm so looking for the time when when our father allows us to be able to come together in person. So I know he's going to do it. The time in which Mr. Biden decides to release all these. I'll not go down that rabbit hole now, but I'm just. (laughs) I know. Let me tell you, we we check every single time and they're still not opening it up. They're still not. So, yeah. But until then. Hey, exactly. let your will be done, Lord. Yep. God bless, <laughs> okay, bro. God bless you. Okay. Bye. Bye.